Hey guys, what is up? It's Christian on a mission here, and this is my second video on my channel. And it's gonna be a question video. I have a question submitted from an iFunnier named Sally underscore bear. Awesome name, Sally. <laughs> and she asks, how do we know and why is the devil evil? Well, Sally, I don't know if you're a Christian or you're a new to the idea of Christianity or you're just curious to know why we think the devil's evil, but I can give you a little bit of background information and tell you a few references from biblical reference point of view and from my own personal and other people's point of view as well. So let me just start off by saying that, if you don't know this already, Satan used to be an angel in heaven named Lucifer. And there were there are tons and tons of angels in heaven and none of them, they don't have free will anymore. And the reason God took their free will is because of what Lucifer did. Basically, Lucifer thought that he was God and that he could be God. And God wasn't, you know, he wanted to be better than God was. And he got a bunch of the other angels to pretty much stand up to God and try to have this big battle against God. And God wouldn't have any of it. So, God being who he is, cast the angels down to their own little kingdom of, basically, hell. And... Down in hell, Lucifer and his angels, which became demons, basically became very, very angry with God, very resentful, very jealous because they weren't God, and that's what their goal was. So they kept with a new goal to turn as many people on earth away from God as possible, doing whatever means possible, meaning the demons could possess people and Satan could get into people's minds and deceive them and tempt them with all kinds of terrible things so that they would be worshiping him and what his like the earthly stuff down there rather than heaven and God up above. So that's just a little background information about Satan and the demons. Now I have several references of scripture in my Bible talking about Satan in general and what he's like and what he does. And I found a couple. The first one I'm going to talk about is 1 Peter 5.8. So let me go ahead and find that one. I have not marked in here. First Peter 5, 8 says, Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And if you know anything about lions devouring people, that's just... <laughs> that's pretty harsh and terrible sounding. I mean, honestly, <laughs> that sounds pretty harsh to me. And that's just one reference. I have another reference in Revelations 2.9 or 19. 2.19? Yes, 2.19. I'm sorry. Revelations Revelations 2.19 Hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. 12.9. I'm sorry. Revelations 12.9. <laughs> uh, it's talking about Basically, the end of times, it says, This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to earth with all his angels. So, basically, it's talking about the great battle in the end of times, where it's the army of Satan, like all the people who do terrible, sinful things, and the, we're going to worship Satan and completely dismiss God. And then they thought, God, basically, the devil is free for a thousand years if you actually read scripture. He's free on earth for a thousand years to deceive, to tempt, to get into people's mind, to use his demons and minions to possess other people, and to get in their heads. And that just doesn't sound very good to me at all. That just sounds really, really creepy and really bad. And I'm going to give it one more reference, and it goes back to Jesus' ministry as um, a 33-year-old on earth ministering around and he went and he cast a demon out in Mark if I can get to Mark <laughs> I, I marked all these pages before I guess I swear um, and it's talking about how he went to okay I'll just read it to you so they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of Gerenesis I guess that's how you pronounce it I don't know <laughs> I'm sorry when Jesus climbed out of the boat a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from a cemetery to meet him this man lived along the burial caves and could no longer be restrained even with a chain. Whenever he was put in chains and shackles, as often as he was, he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the, shack the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day he wandered the burial caves and the hills, 
howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. And this guy's possessed by a demon. Doesn't sound very pleasant to me. I mean, if that's what the devil does, he, he has his minions possess people and make them hurt themselves. That doesn't really sound really, you know, good at all. That sounds really <laughs> dark and terrible. So that's one of another example from scripture. And now I'm going to go into more personal references. People, I'm sure you can relate, Sally, that you've had times in your life where you just feel like you're not worth anything and that no one cares about you and you get these thoughts that just come in your mind and make you feel really upset and people go through that. A lot of people, almost everyone goes through that. I can pretty much safely say that everyone goes through that and I've been through that. And it just, it can happen out of nowhere and sometimes I'll be laying in bed at like two o'clock in the morning just wide awake because I keep having all these thoughts just, just keep coming in and they're making me feel horrible and down and it, I know it's not from me. It's obviously from him and he's trying to get me away from God and he's trying to make me feel like I'm worthless and that's not, that's Satan. You know, that's not, that's not of God. That's not me. It's Satan and that's just evil. That's terrible. So that's another example. Um, sometimes when you know you should do something really good for somebody, if you see like a homeless man on the side of the street and you your gut instinct's like, hey, you should give him something. But then there's this little thing that's like, no, no, no. You can't afford that. Just keep driving. Just keep going. That's Satan. Because he doesn't want you to do the right thing. Or if you're scared to talk to somebody about God, if you're a Christian, that's Satan. He's trying to keep you in fear and trying to keep you from doing the right thing. So not only can he get in your mind and deceive you, he can make fill you with fear, he'll fill you with doubt, he'll fill you with every negative emotion that you can possibly think of. And that's just, to me, that's already evil enough. To tear a person down to the point where they don't want to do anything anymore, they don't want to live, they don't have the will to do anything, is just, that's evil. And that's what I believe Satan does. So, in my opinion, that's why Satan, that's why he's evil. That's what he does. Now, there are a bunch of people out there who can argue with me all they want and say that Satan's all about freedom and individuality and this and that. Now, let me ask you a question. Marriage is a beautiful thing. It's, it's a beautiful thing. People submit each other to themselves. That's what marriage is. It's submission. And submission is one of those church words that people don't like because it's like, oh my gosh, it's submission. Now, if you're all about individuality and just you and nobody else... You don't. You can't really be in a really good, sustaining relationship with anyone, because you're all about you, and you're you have selfish inner thoughts. Now, saying that people who are on the side are selfish, but they can be, and it becomes a problem. So, my point is, is if you submit yourself to God, if you let's say, hey, His will is more important than mine, then that's an amazing thing, and. It's honestly one of the coolest things ever when you get married to someone someday to be able to put their needs before yours and be able to do good for them and not just be a to put your own little sense of yourself is pretty awesome. And I'm not trying to tear anybody down. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad, but that's, that's what I think. That's my belief. So I think that Satan is bad because he's, he's evil because of what he does. He deceives. He puts fear in you. He's uses his minions, his demons, to harass and possess people. It's actually, there are documented cases. And it's really, really scary. But the, the really awesome thing is about this is that in the end of times, we know, we've read the Bible, Jesus wins, God wins, good wins. And that's, it's awesome. It's amazing. So that's my end of my story today, you guys. My story, my video, I guess I could say. I just wanted to clarify that. And if you still have any questions, Sam or Sally... Let's call you Sam. I'm so sorry. Sally. <laughs> if you have any questions, Sally, any other questions, you can comment on this video or you can comment on my funny again and I'll be glad to help you out with that. So thank you guys for so much for watching and if you like this or if you want to refute me or even debate me, that's totally okay. We can comment section down below. If you like this though, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, tell your friends about it. And I'll be doing this probably about, I'll start off doing it at least twice a week. And if I have more time and I get myself more comfortable in front of the camera, because it's my first time ever doing this stuff, then I'll do it more often. 
thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day and remember that Jesus loves you. Amen.